is a Bitcoin wallet? And which wallet type should you use to make sure that you and your Bitcoin are safe and secure? Well, that is exactly what you and I are going to be discussing here. I hope things are well, my friend. I'm Jeff from 10tononline.com. And really, 10ton and the work that I do there is really all about building and launching your fulfilling online business. But of course, here today, it's all about Bitcoin and Bitcoin wallets and cryptocurrencies and all this wild, crazy stuff. So stick around to the end and I'll show you where you can go and what you can do to learn more about Bitcoin and blockchain in plain English. This, I think, is one of the biggest challenges that I'm seeing out there, at least anyway. There's a lot of videos and a lot of articles and a lot of content on this stuff, but it's all freaking technical and hard to understand. It's difficult enough, isn't it? So the way that I try to explain it is all very simply plain English using metaphors and things like this that we can all understand. So anyway, getting a little off track, <laughs> stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you where you can go to learn more about this stuff in plain English. In the meantime, though, we've got to talk about Bitcoin wallets. What the heck is a Bitcoin wallet? Well, I think of a Bitcoin wallet as being exactly the same as my bank account. So a Bitcoin wallet is simply a place to store spend and receive Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So that's the gist, that's the basics. But all this said, there are a few different types of wallets that you can use and depending on yourself and what you wanna do with Bitcoin and your specific situation, you may want to make sure that you're using the right kind of wallet type for whatever it is that you're doing. Now, most commonly you could use what's called a software wallet. Perhaps you've heard of this before. These are sometimes referred to as hot wallets or soft wallets. These are just simple applications that you would install on your computer or even on your smartphone to, like I say, store your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. If you want some examples, Samurai is a great Bitcoin wallet. It's a mobile only wallet. There's another one, my personal choice is called Exodus. Fantastic, great interface and very, very simple and easy to use. But of course, as I'm sure you can imagine, there are many, many other software wallets available for you to choose from. Now, another route that you may want to go down, another option for you is something called a hardware wallet, which again, you've probably heard of before. Sometimes these are called cold wallets. And essentially these are kind of like USB drives, you know, like a little thumb drive. You plug it into your computer and that's where all your Bitcoin and crypto are stored. And your hardware wallet, again, like a USB drive has special software installed on it to store your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. If you want some examples, Ledger is a great choice. My personal choice is a hardware wallet called Trezor. But of course, again, there are many options, many others available. Now, what's cool, what's interesting is you and I and everyone else can have as many software and hardware wallets as we want, just like we can open different bank accounts with different banks, right? Now, that said, this in mind, or keeping this in mind, some security and safety issues do need to be taken into account. There's sort of an unwritten rule in the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that kind of goes like this. If you're holding more than around a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, then it's really recommended to move that amount to a hardware wallet. I was going to say cold storage, but a hardware wallet. That's because a hardware wallet is way, way more secure. It is the most secure type of wallet that you can get much more secure than a software wallet. Because what happens is, so you plug it into your computer and you move your Bitcoin over to it. And then what do you do? Well, you unplug it from your computer. So now it's no longer connected to the internet. It is not physically connected to any device. And then you put it in a really, really safe place. Now, without getting too far into the technical weeds here, the different wallets that you use will store what's called your wallet's private key. Think of your wallet's private key, if you're not sure here, think of it as the secret password that grants access to the funds that are stored in your wallet. And a software wallet that's installed on your smartphone or on your laptop or wherever, is always connected to the internet, right? And that means that there's potential, albeit it is a remote potential, there's a chance that it could be hacked or maybe more likely you could lose your phone. 
you could, <laughs> it could fall in a lake, it could catch fire, <laughs> all sorts, of, it could get hit by a meteorite or eaten by a gopher, who the heck knows? But with a hardware wallet, the private keys, the top secret password is kept on that physical device, which is disconnected from the internet. That's why hardware wallets are the most secure type of Bitcoin wallet. Further, and this is something else to think about, and again, at the risk of digging too far down into the technical weeds, we think of our Bitcoin as being stored inside of our Bitcoin wallet, right? Whether that's in a software wallet or a hardware wallet. Well, really, your wallet, doesn't matter what kind of wallet you decide to use, really, your wallet simply provides you with an interface to connect to the Bitcoin that you own. So the Bitcoin that you own aren't actually, they're not actually stored in the wallet. They just give you access to the Bitcoin that you own. So where are the Bitcoin that you own? Where do they actually reside? Well, the brain bender here is that the Bitcoin that are currently assigned to you exist way down on the blockchain. I've got to stress though, my friend, that is a bit of a, a brain bender and it's difficult to understand. And we'd have to dig down a few technical rabbit holes to really understand that concept. What I always say is that for regular folks like you and I, we really don't need to know exactly how this stuff works. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about all this stuff being way too technical and complicated to sort out. The examples that I always use, do you need to know how the electricity in your house works in order for you to make use of the electricity in your house? Or how about your car? Do you need to know exactly how engines work and how your car works in order to actually use your car? No, of course not. It's the same thing with Bitcoin and blockchain. You can dig into that stuff if you're really, really interested, but for most regular normal folks, all we need to know is the basics and we need to know that it does work. So with all of this in mind, if you're ready to take the next steps into this wild, crazy, exciting world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and really wrap your head around all this stuff, and maybe more importantly, wrap your head around what it all means and the implications here, then definitely check out my book, Understanding Bitcoin. You won't want to miss it. I've got to tell you, and I always love throwing this in here, this book project here really truly was a passion project and a labor of love. I've been involved in a lot of projects over the years and years and years that I've been at this stuff, and easily this was the most complex and also satisfying work that I've ever done. This all goes back to what you and I were talking about earlier, about a lot of the content that's out there being really complex and difficult to understand, and that complexity and the way that it's explained becomes a barrier for regular folks who are interested, who do want to learn about it. So one of the big challenges with understanding Bitcoin, with putting it together, was putting it all in dead simple plain English that anyone can understand, even retired pensioners, and also keep it short and sweet. It's under 200 pages because in my mind, one of the greatest skills that you and I can have is consuming information rapidly and understanding and wrapping our heads around new concepts quickly. That's why I knew it had to be short and sweet. I couldn't hand you a 500 page book and go have fun because you that, forget it. That's a barrier unto itself, isn't it? So it is short. It is sweet. It is plain English. It is to the point. You won't want to miss it. I can't wait to see you there.